osteoarthritis, gout, and rheumatoid arthritis are the top three most common arthritic conditions worldwide. Rheumatoid arthritis, or RA, unlike the others, is an autoimmune arthritis. Autoimmunity basically means production of autoantibodies. This is the first autoimmune disease we are discussing so far in this course. Just like most autoimmune diseases, RA is more common in women, particularly middle-aged females in this case. But it can really affect anybody. And its etiopathogenesis is not entirely clear. However, we know that an interaction exists between genes and environment because both being a carrier of human leukocyte antigen share epitope or HLA-SE alleles and smoking tobacco are strongly associated with developing rheumatoid arthritis. Other environmental associations include alterations in the microbiomes of the mouth, gut, and lung. Once our immunity is triggered, antibodies are produced and rheumatoid arthritis subsequently develops. Examples of these antibodies include rheumatoid factor, or RF, and cyclic citrullinated peptide, or CCP, which is also called anti-citrullinated protein antibodies, or ACPA. It may take years after the production of RO antibodies until the individual becomes symptomatic. The inflammatory reaction that results from autoimmunity is very prominent in the synovial membrane, which becomes hyperplastic and hypertrophic, meaning there's an abnormal increase in cell number and size. As a result, a so-called panus is formed that invades the joint cartilage and bone and mediates tissue destruction and the formation of bone erosions. The classic clinical presentation of rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic, insidious, and persistent inflammatory arthritis of the small joints of both hands, but mainly the proximal interphalangeal, or PIP, and metacarpophalangeal, or MCP joints, as well as the wrist and both feet, but mainly the metatarsophalangeal, or MTP joints. When RA patients come to you, they complain of joint pain, swelling, redness, warmth, and morning stiffness lasting for hours. They report having a weak grip, difficulty making a fist, dropping things to the ground, and have other limitations with their daily activities. Because this is an inflammatory joint pain, symptoms get worse in the mornings or after prolonged periods of rest, and can improve with movement. On physical examination, you may be able to appreciate thickening of the synovium and the cardinal features of inflammation, swelling, heat, redness, pain, and loss of function. If the arthritis is severe or has been present for years, you will also notice deformities like the previously mentioned swan's neck, boutonnieres, and C deformities and ulnar deviations. Sometimes you may find rheumatoid nodules on the dorsum of the hands or extensor surfaces elsewhere. These are superficial nodules, typically small, that can be located under the skin, over the tendons, bursa, and bones. Keep in mind that rheumatoid arthritis is capable of causing less common atypical clinical presentations, for example, it can involve large joints only, be asymmetric, cause monoarthritis, be episodic, in which case we call it palindromic RA, or have a more sudden onset rather than insidious. But it rarely, if ever, does RA affect the thoracolumbar or sacral spine. Think of something else if the patient is complaining of symptoms in these locations. As a systemic autoimmune disease, RA can also affect organs other than the joints. Examples of extraarticular manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis include scleritis, interstitial lung disease, pericarditis, meningitis, sweet syndrome, also known as acute febrile neutrophilic dermatosis, and vasculitis. 
In terms of diagnosis, there are clinical criteria you can use as a guide, but a detailed history and physical examination are always fundamental. Checking for autoantibodies like RF, CCP, or the newest biomarkers, anti-carbaminated P antibodies, and 14-3-3 eta protein are helpful. But you need to keep in mind that not all patients with positive markers have rheumatoid arthritis, and people can have rheumatoid arthritis with negative blood tests as well. On imaging, the bone erosions that are classic for RA are in the marginal areas of the joints, at the edges, because that's where the cartilage is the thinnest and the inflammatory panus is located. However, not all RA patients have bone erosions. In severe cases, complete destruction of the bone epiphysis can occur. The joint space narrowing in RA is usually symmetrical, as opposed to the asymmetrical narrowing seen in osteoarthritis. Periarticular osteoporosis is another characteristic of rheumatoid arthritis, which you will not see in other arthritic conditions like osteoarthritis or psoriatic arthritis. Other imaging modalities like ultrasound and magnetic resonance imaging can be used to detect subclinical synovitis when the history and or physical exam are confusing. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.